How you doing everyone? My name is Ryan and this is Ade and here we go with another edition of Box Talk. Today, Shane Mosley, has he still got the sugar? Can he take out Anthony Mundine? He's going to Australia, he's travelling again. What's the sugar man doing? No, you know what he's doing? He's making money. Yeah. It's the only thing he's doing. <laughs> Jim Mosley is taking every motherfucking penny he's got, so he's trying to make some money. But no, realistically, um, look, I, I, I think Shane Mosley probably should have retired after the Pacquiao fight. Yeah. Um, he definitely think. should have retired after the Alvarez fight, but yes. probably should have retired after the Pacquiao fight. But again, like most boxers, he said he feels good in the gym. Yeah. Who are we to say he doesn't? You know, one thing about Shane Mosley is that he hasn't... Pacquiao put him down hard, mm. and Alvarez... Watch the Alvarez fight again. It wasn't that bad a performance. He's not been hit by concussive punches. Yeah. He's not one of those fighters that say, my God, he, he yeah. should stop. Like, um, because he's gonna have brain problems, he's not like a Cassidus or anything, he's not taking bad, bad shots. Mm. Um, he obviously went to um, Cancun uh, in the summer, he won that fight convincingly, mm. and he thinks he can beat Mundine. I think Mundine's all the Mundine's a three weight world champion. Um, Mundine's, I think, not a great champion, and I think it's a winnable fight, maybe. I, 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 I disagree with you. Um, I think Molly should have retired, like you said, yeah. Mosey has got a tremendous chin, anyone anyone can see he's got a tremendous chin. If you saw what he took on Vernon Forrest back in, I think it was 2003, and the flurry he took while he was going down and still get up to go on like four rounds, yeah. I mean, it's going to take a hard to block to put him out. But what will put him out is a guy who's bigger, stronger. Let's look at this right now. Mundine was actually a super middleweight title this. He's actually come down from super middleweight down to middleweight, and he had an interim title at super middleweight, I think. Yeah, the interim title. Yeah. And then he's come down to 154, I think he's had another interim title or some sort of intercontinental belt at World of Weight. I mean, this guy, I swear, at Junior, Junior World, Junior World Weight, this guy is a bigger guy coming down. You're looking at Mosley, who I'm a big fan of Mosley, you know, I was a huge fan of Mosley coming up. Mosley's a guy coming up from a much smaller weight up to fighting these guys. And if you look at his fights, he's never looked good at 154. He's kind of topped out at 154. He's not fighting at 154 because obviously age has made him fight 154. He struggles to make 147. Just because age makes you fight at that weight, doesn't make you fight at that weight. I agree, but you've got to look at it two ways, and I think you mentioned it just there. Uh, Mosley's coming up. Mosley's mm -hmm. always, Mosley for the last 10 years has probably been around 147. He's had a couple of fights at 154, mm -hmm. but he's been around 147. Mm -hmm. So it's coming up, which is kind of naturally for yeah. someone that age, you're going to build out, it's hard yeah. to cut weight. Equally, same for Mundine. You tr I think it's a lot easier to go up in weight when you're going up a few pounds. Yeah than to go down from 168 to 154. So I think it'll be good to see how that affects Mundine as well, to go down that much weight. That's a lot of weight to go down as well. Um, Mundine ain't 21 people, you know? And Mundine's an old guy as well. So, oh yeah, he's campaigned at 154 a couple of times now, but when you're going down from 168 to 154, again, that takes its toll. Um, you've got to look at it two ways here. And it's similar, we've done videos on Hopkins, we spoke about it as well. These guys right now, at that age, it's more, you're, you're, you're in there just to cash checks. Yeah. You're in there just to get fights. There's no way you're going all the way to Mexico and now go all the way to Sydney. It wasn't just for that. It's not for titles, just to earn a bit of money. Yeah. And uh, Jok, again, like I said, he's not having custom knockouts. Really. Jokes are sound like Adam mentioned the game. Jim Mosley took a lot of Shane's savings and a lot of his Took his belts. Took his belts. Took his yeah. belts. Took her. Yeah. And like, he now, he now has a certain life he's been living to, accustomed to, and he can't provide it anymore. So he's taking these risky fights, yeah. traveling the board and running away. Roy Jones Jr. Yeah. doing exactly the same thing Roy Jones done, you see. I mean, that's not yeah, a good look. Doing. It's funny talking about Roy Jones Jr. Do you actually remember Mundy was actually trained by Roy Sr., Roy Jones' dad, mm. um, back in the day as well. I mean, Roy John, Mundy has got some skills behind some play game before him. He used to play record football. Or something like that before. He's played, um, no, um, Australian rules football. Yeah, Australian rules football. Yeah. And then he come over and went to boxing. So it's not really his first sport, but he is a pure athlete. See, that's that's a good thing that we just mentioned. And we're not going to go into Roy Jones. That's another video we're going to we're, we're going to cover in a couple of months' time. But you look at Roy Jones, for example. We've seen concussive knockouts. Mm -hmm. So that's a guy that I think should stop. Yeah. See, this, this is the difference for me. Mostly, we've seen been put down by yeah. Pacquiao. Still got up. Was able he's, to go through the twelve rounds. He's been relatively he's been re exactly. Yeah. Been relatively competitive yeah. in these fights. He's not. We're not talking about complete shutouts. We're not talking about a guy that's taken serious beatings. Yeah. I mean, where you look at someone like Roger Junior, yeah. who's traveling, he's been knocked yeah. out cold. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? By lesser competitors. Yeah. Danny Green knocked him out yeah. cold, and he's still fighting. And I think that's the difference with Mosley. Um, as much as I don't want him to fight, yeah. I'm not one to wave the white flag and say he should stop fighting. Yeah, and that. I'm looking at Mosley's style and the way he fights. He's, he's, Mosley's got this habit of telegraphing his punches. You see this kind of jittery pop before he starts throwing his punches in his hands. Yeah. And you kind of, you can see what he's going to do before he does it. And 
he's not working for three minutes of the round no more. He's doing a certain thing. As a way, Pock has done it for three minutes of each round. Pock uses the ring as an advantage and moves around, stays in ring, and uses that jab to keep his distance. Mosley doesn't fight the same type of style. Mosley still wants to kind of stand close range to get his shots off. I've got a feeling, and I'm not trying to pick on Mosley, yeah. but if, if Mosley's got to lose a fight, and he can lose a fight, it's going to be this one. See, the thing that Mosley's going to look at, and I think I've heard Mosley say in an interview as well, um, you, you look at the last four fights that Mosley's had, obviously Mora was a draw, yeah. you know that, Floyd Mayweather, pound for pound number one, yeah. Pacquiao at the time, yeah. equal with Floyd Mayweather, yeah. pound for pound yeah. number two, yeah. and Alvarez at the yeah. time, unbeaten this kid, 46 and 0, whatever. He's lost to the three guys that right now are the big cash cows in boxing, yeah. the kings of boxing, mm -hmm. and he's not lost to them stupidly yeah. embarrassingly. It was the person that was closest yeah. to knocking out Floyd Mayweather, yeah. and everyone forgets that. Mm -hmm. And Pacquiao, no disrespect, yeah. every single human yeah. being was running away from Pacquiao. Yeah. And again, you watch the Alvarez fight, Everyone cheers yeah. when Alvarez lands a blow, no one cheers when Mosley lands a blow. Yeah. It wasn't as bad as that. What I think about the volume. Exactly. I think he's looking at Monday and thinking, you're a big step. Yeah, you're a bigger guy, but you're a big step below the guys that I big easily fight. lost to. Yeah. So I think he's looking at thinking, we never know. And this is the thing with Monday, he doesn't really come out of Australia, we never know. And you know, people do criticize the um Sergio Moro fight, but let's remember Sergio Moro did beat the late great Vernon Forrest. There you go. So, so, well, so it, it, just, it just shows that Sergio Moro, as much as he ain't punched, punch, he could box, he could move. He knows how to mix it up. It's almost, like, it's almost, like, it's, it's almost like a melanage of the middleweights. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean? he, he hasn't really got the, the pop, but he can box. Yeah, he can box. It's bad. And that's it. I don't know. Is it, I, anyone knows me? That's it. I'm a huge Mosley fan. I was supporting Mosley. I actually had Mosley beating Mayweather before the fight was signed. I'll put myself put it out there. Everyone laughs at me now, but we do laugh now. I do. Look, I do. I do. I was a big fan of Mosley, but I've clearly seen deterioration in oh, his yeah, skills yeah. and overall potential. And I'm just looking at this fight and saying. You're fighting for the wrong reasons. You're traveling to Australia. I don't think it's a good idea. I, I think for him, there's that risk reward factor yeah. in it. Mosley's not going to get a world title anymore. Mosley's not going to get big fights unless he's kind of this gatekeeper, which they don't want to use him for anymore. He's not going to fight in Australia. I'm mean, sorry, in America. Yeah. I don't see the problem for me um, in taking these fights in these countries just to get a bit of extra cash because I think he deserves it. And he, like I said, he's not in big wars. And he's not getting hurt. So unlike Roy Jones Jr., who definitely should retire for me, I look at someone like Mosley. He still looks fit. He lives a good life. Why not try to earn a bit of money going around the world and fighting? Just for one more thing before we go here. People talk about look at the records. And obviously, Mosley's fought at the higher level overall. Big time. But if you look at who Monday's fought, who are, again, bigger guys, he's been in there with the likes of Kessler, yeah. Danny Green, mm. a current former IBF champion, Daniel Gill, yeah. um, Sten Ocker. Yeah, he's been in there with a lot of the good, bigger guys, or you say the better fighters of that generation in that weight class. And he's been around for a long time, like Mosley. And like, that's off the top of my head. If I start to think deeply, you would find three or four more marquee names that you'll recognize. They go, this guy's actually been there. And he's won most of those fights. Besides the Kessler fight and um, the Ucker fight where he got stopped, he's, he's, he's beaten all these guys. Yeah, but again, you've got to look at it another way. And it's, it, it, it's back to the weight thing for me. Well, the big names that you just mentioned there are 168 and 160. Yeah. He's, boiling, he's boiling himself down now yeah. to 154. That's a big thing to do. He, like yeah. I said, he's not a young guy anymore. Um, he's in his mid-30s as well, yeah, Monday, I think yeah. late, mid to late yeah. 30s. To boil yourself down, mm -hmm. rather, think about it, when you get older, you know as well, you're supposed to go up in yeah. weight. That's what, yeah. that's what you generally yeah. do. Yeah. You don't boil yourself down. So I think I'd like to see how that works against him. Yeah. And um, like I said, Moti's mixed with higher competition relatively recently as well. Apart from the fight in Cancun, the fight before that was Alvarez, the fight before that was Pacquiao, so he's mixed with good fighters recently. Yeah. So I think these guys have not blown him out, so to me he's still, he's not a world-class elite fighter anymore, yeah. but he's a good fighter. I mean, we were yeah. asking to, for him to fight Cowboy, that shows yeah, the kind yeah, of level yeah, that yeah, we yeah, still yeah, think yeah, he is. Yeah. So I still think he's got a chance. Guys, what do you think? Should, should um, Shane Mosley call it a day? Is this fight too risk? Is it a risk-reward fight? He's getting paid quite well. Who do you think is going to win? Shane Mosley or Mundine? Tell me what you think, Ryan, first. Who wins? I'm going for the upset. I'm going for Mandeen. Yeah, the upset. Who's favourite? I don't know who's favourite right now. I don't know who's favourite, but I think, you know, I think it's an upset because Moz is the name and Moz is going to travel into the eyes oh, he's going to go out there and make an easy pay packet and come over. I just think a combination of the Moz is inactive because he did retire for like a year after yeah. the average fight. The size, the travel, the hometown. If money doesn't, if money doesn't get the stoppage, he'll get it on points. Okay, guys, I'm going to stick with Mosley. I think Mosley wins the points decision. It's going to be a tight one. 
as he's saying, Mundine is the bigger guy, Mundine is the home fire. But something about Shane Mosley, I think that in terms of level opposition, in terms of who he's recently fought, minus the guy in Cancun, I think he's fought in the higher opposition recently. And I think that hold him in good state. This guy is never going to be as fast as Pacquiao. He's never going to be as sharp as Mayweather. And he might not even be as strong. We don't know because of the weight cut as Alvarez. So guys, leave the comments below. Hit us, email us at foxtalk at hotmail.co.uk. And guys, thanks for tuning in for another edition of Box Talk.